You don't like that guy blowing leaves, do you? That's too close to your backyard and you're the king and he didn't get permission. The last flowers of fall, putting up quite a fight. They don't want to go anywhere. They just want to keep blooming. I know how they feel. Come here. My house here has proved to be a good house, a solid house, a warm house. That's all I ever wanted. <laughs> a house with my name on it. Just take a look at yourself. Do you really think it's gonna help? If you always fight in yourself, trying to forget how you felt. Just take a look at yourself. Can't even be your own friend. Cause you're always just stuck in your head. How do you think it's gonna end? Nothing that they could do. Nothing that they could say. Nothing that they could do. But take all the pain away. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it don't. Sometimes you win some and sometimes you won't. But we could be everything. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi today. I hope you had a good, safe week. And today, I want to talk about habits and I want to talk about skincare. And you know, you ask me all the time to do a video about my skincare routine. And well, I do once a year, but this one is kind of special because I'm talking about habits that I needed to start when it came to taking care of my skin and some habits I had to stop. There's some really good important information that I want to share with you about what happens to your skin after 65 years old and so many things I had to change. If you can, if you have time, I hope you can stay till the end of the video. I want to share with you a habit that I had to change when it came to my own mental health. I really struggled this week and, and I wanted to share with you something that happened and a habit that I need to break. And then I want to hear about some of your habits, some of the things that help you when you're struggling. So the last bloom of my Rose of Sharon, another one putting up quite a fight. Winter's coming, but you don't care. You're going to bloom anyway. Skin care in the United States is a multi-billion dollar business and I have always tried to be so straight with you on what I think works, but 99% of everything that I have ever tried to use on my skin to look better, to look younger, has failed. And it's frustrating and you kind of go through life kind of not trusting. If somebody holds up a product and says, hey, this is really going to make you look great. You don't believe it. At least I don't. You know, the $200 facial tools, I've tried those and they gave me heart palpitations. So it started with my eye doctor. My eye doctor told me I couldn't use retinol anymore. That retinol, Deferin, Retin-Ate, that clogs the pores that produces the oil for your eyes. So it causes severe dry eye, which I was already suffering from. So I put that aside and what was happening when I stopped using those products is my skin seemed to get sort of thicker and dull and 
Well, I didn't even recognize myself. I was starting to film videos for you and I just thought, who's that? What's going on? So I did a little research and they said, one of the most important things you can do for cell turnover is have a glycolic acid cleanser. And I thought, yeah, okay, all right. And that was as far as I went. Didn't research it, didn't dive into like, what's the number one product? I was at the drugstore. I picked up this one by L'Oreal and I thought, well, cool. This is a glycolic acid cleanser. Look it, it looks so cute and innocent. Oh, well, it's not. I'm in the shower, day three with this, right? And I don't think I have to be careful. I didn't read you had to be careful. It doesn't say be careful on that. I read the fine print. There's no warning that it'll tear your face off. So I'm in the shower on the third day and I'm just massaging it. And I get out of the shower and I am in such pain. And my skin is just stinging. I look in the mirror and it is bright red. And I have skin just like coming off on my fingers. It reminded me of a $100 peel that I got years ago. When it I took six days for my skin not to hurt. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't go anywhere near this. It was too strong and too dramatic. What I realized is something like this. You're going to use it maybe once a week, and you're certainly not going to do what I did, rub it in and, you know, keep massaging it in. And I mean, it's true that after that week, my skin was very shiny, and it indeed looked like I had a professional uh, treatment done. It did. So what I did is I went out and I ordered a milder glycolic acid cleanser. And this one is by Derma E and they are awesome. This company was started by a dermatologist and I was cautious at first. I just used a tiny little bit and I didn't massage it in. I just washed my face with it. Ah, success. It didn't hurt. It turned it a little bit red, but I'm okay. And I realized that as I am approaching 70, my skin is sensitive. It has thinned out. And yes, I still want that cell turnover, but I'm going to have to use different ways to get that cell turnover. And I really don't want to be spending one or two hundred dollars for fancy peels. So I wanted to share this information with you because you can get both of these over the counter or I will list these. You can get both of these off of Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, it's really cool. Well, that's a habit that I changed that, you know, my skin is so much brighter now and I, I feel like it is so exfoliated that my makeup goes on better. So everything that I wanted out of Retin-A or Retinol, I am getting out of two cleansers that really kick butt. So I wanted to share that with you. Did you have a good birthday, Desi? I think you did. You got free wagon rides from the neighborhood. How about that? Desi, what's your number one habit for beautiful skin? What's that you say? Ah, flea powder. Yeah, good plan. I think ever since I was a teenager, I wanted pretty skin, but it was just out of reach for me. I had such severe acne, and you know, when I came out of that, I think I had a new appreciation for pretty skin. One thing I have always believed in is that my diet has so much to do with how my skin looks. And I have cut back on my meat consumption. Now, I used to be a vegetarian, but I started eating meat again when I became anemic. So I tell you what I did is I have limited my meat consumption to only two portions per week. And the reason that I have done that is my doctor explained to me that meat causes inflammation in the body and inflammation in the body stops your collagen production. And without collagen, we look old. So if I wanted to purposely age myself, I guess I would eat meat morning, noon, and night. So I'm not going to do that. So I no longer eat a lot of meat and I no longer eat sugar. I love these. 
I put four boxwoods in pots and I'm not sure if they'll survive the winter unless I put them in the ground. I'm not sure about that. If you know, let me know. It was such a beautiful day today. I can't help but dream of spring. All the beautiful flowers that will come up twice as big. The colors are so beautiful. There's my Maxfield Parish tree right in front of my house. I am one lucky girl. There is something so magical to me about using facial oils for my face, my hair, my neck, my decollete. I love my pumpkin seed oil, my rosehip seed oil. That's a habit that I'll never change. And there's something about, you know, when I use my facial oil, I just tap on a little at night and a little bit in the morning. And it doesn't matter, you know, where you kind of slide it in your routine, as long as you're using your oils, you're all set. And the one thing that facial oil does is it kind of tricks your brain into thinking that you have a young body and that young body is producing these cells that once they realize you're producing enough oil, they start to retain water. So what does that water do? That means that our face is more plumped up. We have a more youthful appearance because our body is now allowed to retain water because our cells think they're young. So there's something about rosehip seed oil and pumpkin seed oil. I would just never give up. I just believe in them. I've always harangued you about them year after year. I love my rosehip seed oil and my pumpkin seed oil. It doesn't really matter where you put it in your routine. I think you have noticed over the years that I do have puffy eyes. And I've always been a real snob. You know, I've never thought that the eye patches did anything. I tried a hundred different brands and they never took down my puffiness. So I found one. I found some patches that actually work. And I get it off of Amazon. This is my Black Pearl uh, eye patches. It has collagen and then pearl extract in it, obviously. But it works. I can keep this in the refrigerator or I don't have to. It's just so ice cold on my eyes. I think the results is astounding. I think at least 60% of my swelling underneath my eyes has decreased. Plus, I take a little bit of the extract and I put it above and I feel that has helped me get a little bit of an eye lift. Dizzy, is that your Halloween costume? Did you get that for your birthday? Good job. Dizzy, can you shake? This is the Nutri-C cream that I use, and this is a cream that's made in Italy. Wonderful, lightweight cream. And I got out of the habit of using it because I got kind of really involved in using a lot of different facial oils. I kind of tried them out and I gave this up. And there is a school of thought that says if you use a lot of very heavy uh, night creams that it kind of sags your face down and I kind of believe that too. And I have been talking about this for so long. I get this off of Amazon. I believe it's under $15, but a lot of you have said, or some of you have said, this cream is not thick enough for you. It's not luxurious enough for you. You want something heavier. You want something that's just going to feel much more hydrating on your skin. If you want that, you can add a drop of black castor oil to your cream and it will give you immediately that really rich, thick cream feel that you want. The one thing that separates a $15 cream and a $200 night cream is castor oil. Castor oil is even in Genovique. So 
It's always wonderful to have a bottle of black castor oil handy. And any time that you want to lift up a serum or a cream, grab your castor oil. Yeah, and it's good for your eyelashes too. <laughs> it's kind of fun this time of year to try to look the best we can for our family and friends. And I want to take you through my complete routine, which isn't a whole lot. But at night, I remove my makeup by using a Meltdown by Adrian, and then I go at it with my uh, glycolic acid cleanser. Ladies, I would run, not walk to the drugstore to get this because I'm afraid they're going to change the formula because this is like professional strength, but this is incredible. Now, if you don't want that much drama or adventure, I would go ahead and order the Derma E. This is again a glycolic wash, but it's not as it's not as strong. This is the number one serum in the country. It's just pure hyaluronic acid. L'Oreal puts it out. I really don't care for it too much because it's a little sticky, but I use it around my mouth every day and it does really help diminish lines. If you have a zit and you want to get rid of it overnight, Try the Terminator, it is incredible. After I cleanse my face, I go to my very favorite serum that I've been using for two years now. This is the Algenerous Plant Serum, and I love it. This is by Skin, and this is an algae oil, and this is what I use as a primer. And every single morning, I use a couple drops before I put my makeup on, and it turns any foundation into the most beautiful, lightweight, see-through foundation. It makes your makeup look like, well, it makes it look like your skin. Do you ever feel like you're losing yourself? I don't think so. I think you know exactly who you are. And that's not a little dog. It's a big dog. <laughs> I don't know about you, but not every week for me is a Tom Terrific week. Sometimes I struggle to keep my mood up for no reason at all. and. I kind of call this last week reality versus identity. And it was kind of the perfect storm. And it started out very innocently. My grandson, who I love beyond words, he said to me, Grandma, put your glasses on. You don't look like our grandma unless you have your, your glasses on. And it was adorable and it was so cute. That's how they see me as well, their grandma wears glasses and don't mess with that. It was adorable. So that night, I was thinking about that and kind of chuckling. And on TV comes this ad for, I think it was Medicare, Medicaid something. And they had this woman that was supposed to be my age. And they projected her on the screen, uh, a woman who was in like a house coat, no makeup, before. So I'm not calling. Martha, right now is the Medicare annual... Mm -hmm. Yes, Martha. The call and no obligation Medicare benefits checkup is free. They can look up your plan options and let you know... If That's how the world sees me? Like my grandson with the glasses, the world wants me to look like her because when I'm 73 years old, that's what I'm supposed to look like. That's what I'm supposed to act like. That's what I'm supposed to sound like. And I went through a little identity crisis there, like, wait a minute here. That's, that woman who is projecting a woman my age, she has nothing to do with who I am. The one thing I realized this week is that aging sometimes makes us not feel just disconnected from the world, but perhaps disconnected from the woman that we were, our identity. And that really came into focus this week, that the woman that I am, I, well, I need a little bit of an edge. That 
there's things about me that I have carried with me all my life that makes me who I am. So if I am going around trying to project a woman that I think people want to see, the woman on TV or the proper older woman that doesn't talk about sex, I, I can't do that. I, I can't conform to what other people want me to be. That's never going to happen. It didn't happen when I was young. It didn't happen in middle age. And it can't happen now that I'm coming up on 70. It just won't work for me. And that became crystal clear to me. The happiest times of my life is when I can give someone love and understanding. And if I'm not comfortable with who I am as a woman, then that's not going to happen. It's, it's true. Bombs have never fell over my head. Terrorists ha have never kidnapped my neighbors. I have never known terror in my hometown. But that doesn't prevent me from feeling empathy. It does not prevent the tears from flowing and wanting to be the best I can be. So perhaps I can pay my life forward. I can be a comfort for someone else in this world. My identity is wrapped up in a lot of different things. And it's a vital for me to lead the best life I can for me and others to keep connected, connected to the world and connected to me and anything I have to do to make sure that I'm not feeling like that old lady on TV. I'm gonna do it. And I know you are too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dazzy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs>